expressions. There are pretty useful module inside After Effects that allows you to use little bits of text to control properties and settings and it's very very useful in situations where you simply cannot do what you need to with keyframes uh, they can ease up your workflow but also if you're not careful they could really complicate it so in this video series we're going to talk about expressions how to use them uh, remember there's the after effects expressions basics ebook on ideascreations.blogspot.com you can grab it for free uh, don't forget to leave a review and let me know what you think, but we can consider these videos as uh, something to go along with those if you're not into reading and would rather watch and listen to someone explain things. So uh, in this series, let's just take a look at how expressions work, how to use them, and um, yeah, they're pretty awesome. So let's get started. Here I am inside this project i have uh, one simple composition with a text layer and a purple solid and what i've done is just given it a basic animation inside the position and the opacity just to you know slide up and fade in uh, looks looks pretty decent any property that has a stopwatch can have an expression but it's important to note that that expression can only affect the property that it's in it's you can have an expression in position that's going to affect the opacity uh, you can have a property in position that will reference the opacity in order to affect the position itself, but you can't actually affect uh, any other control. That's uh, the number one. Number two, uh, always make sure that the expression that you're about to use is actually going to help you and is going to be easier to do than actually doing the task with keyframes. This is extremely important because you can spend a whole lot of time struggling to find the right code, the right syntax, and it turns out that with two keyframes, you could have very easily completed the task and moved on. So now that I have that out of the way, let's get started by first seeing how to apply an expression to the opacity of this layer. So to do this, I'm going to grab uh, my layer here. I'm going to press T to show the opacity property, and you'll see we have a bunch of keyframes here actually two, and they are from zero all the way up to 100. So what I want to do here is apply an expression to this that's going to affect this animation in some way. So to do this, we can hold down the Alt key and we're going to click on the stopwatch and note what's gonna happen. Let me click there and you'll see a text box appears here with the text selected, currently reading transform.opacity. The text inside the property itself, this 100% over here, is now red. We have this sort of row that's appeared here with a text that has four buttons that we're going to cover as we go along. And yes, so that's what's changed. So let me click away and commit this expression here, transform.opacity, and let's see what happens. Well, it's still exactly the same. We still have the value changing here from zero to 100 nothing's really changed. Well, what's happened is that our code currently is just telling this property to be, you know, be yourself. Just look at what you're doing and and, and do that, you know. <laughs> so the transform the opacity, uh, let, let, me, let me just open this up like this. And you'll see that it's kind of moving from the top of the layer and going down. So it's taking us from the transform tab and into the transform uh, and into the opacity property, which is down here, and that's transformed in opacity. So this expression is actually extremely redundant because what it's doing is actually what the keyframes are doing. So let's see what we can throw in here in order to make it actually have an effect. I'm gonna change this to 75. I'm just gonna type in 75, click away, and okay, what's gonna happen now? Let's scroll through here. We'll see our position is still happening, but our opacity, is no longer animating it is now locked at 75 so this is the important point here expressions are going to override keyframes and whatever value you have when you typed it into here so if I actually click on this box you'll see it says 80 and that's the value that I had typed in but if I click away it's still saying 75 this is because the expressions were going to get priority over the keyframes or whatever value you type inside the box so in order to use the keyframes and in order to use the value that you've typed in, you have to keep the transform.opacity text that we were using. So if I come in here and type uh, transform.opacity and I'm going to do uh, minus 20. 
So when I click away, uh, you'll see that our animation is back. It's now fading in. But notice, it's actually not fading all the way up to 100. It's actually stopping at 80. So what's happening now is that it's actually looking at the value that we had typed, uh, that the keyframes are producing, which is uh, 0 to 100. And it's going to subtract 20 from that value. So the 0 is going to remain 0, simply because opacity cannot actually go into a negative value. And then at the 100%, it's going to subtract 20 and give us 80. So in this case, it's actually looking at the value that we have coming from the keyframes, simply because we've added that transform.opacity. I hope all this is making sense because this is very important. Uh, I'm gonna click over here and change this to a different uh, text that we can use for this, and that is value. Value is exactly the same as typing in transform.opacity, but the good thing with this is that it's a general sort of uh, uh, it's a general sort of text that you can use. So in this example, value is actually going to look at whatever it's tied to. Okay, so I think that's a nice base to begin with. You have your uh, keyframes and how they work with expressions, how to exp apply expressions, how they affect the keyframes and the value that you apply, and how to reference the values that you apply uh, inside the expressions. So try different things, try value minus, value plus, Try dividing, multiplying, just try out uh, everything that you can when you're inside this expression box. Try and find out the limitations of this value method and the transform.opacity method. And uh, once you think you're good and comfortable with how all these works, you can move on to the next video where we're going to talk about how to link controls to one another. Um, thanks for watching and I'll see you there.